Hi, this is Benny. I'm the Type of 3 Core Development Lead. I will talk about caching today because that's some topic that a lot of um, people approach me. How you know does caching work internally? How what does Type of 3 cache and all these kinds of topics? Um, I will give you an introduction today, but not go into all the details because that's that's something I would do in two days. And uh, I don't think anybody would want to watch me for two days. So today I just want to give you a real life example on you know what we have in our daily business uh, when a customer calls us up and says, hey, I changed something on my website and I see the changes when I reload my front end. However, if a different, if my colleague, a different uh, user goes on the uh, page, he still sees the old content which is a problem if you do like, um, you know, bigger websites with news that should be changed or visible within minutes. So that's something that we need to um, cope with. And the other part, if we, um, if we look at caching and disable caching, then the customer calls us up and say, hey, my website is slow. So we need to look at the main topic is caching good or bad at all. Um, well, I would say caching is good because um, if you take an example, if you have a big image and you want to resize it into a smaller image and the website shows this smaller image, this thumbnail, you don't want to do that for every time the website user looks on this page because it's the same deal you do, it's just, you know, resizing and this job takes a lot of time, CPU resources uh, on your server, it's just unnecessary. So why not just keep the, the smaller image um, in your cache or on your file system, whatever, and just deliver that the next time and you don't have to do that job. That's basically caching and that's a good thing, right? Um, however, if this the master image changes, then you should of course update your thumbnail as well. And then um, the visitor of your website should see this thumbnail as well. And the same same approach uh, with the thumbnails also applies you know, to your HTML website. But there's more than typo three to caching. And I want to uh, show you what kind of caches are there. You, first of all, the browser does a lot of caching. And then if the browser is not allowed to cache something, then the server might cache something, you know, CDNs, proxies, um, you know, memory caches, whatever you, you put into place with your Nginx or Varnish. And then Typo3 does some internal caching. And then we have this whole topic of the, the caching framework. Where do you want to store um, these caching information uh, data parts? You want to put that into your memory, your database, on the file system. That's something that you can do with the caching framework um, that is quite powerful because you have, sometimes you have just have different setups where it makes more sense to store it in memory or on a, um, on a shared database if you have multiple servers, stuff like that. I will, however, not uh, cover the topic of the caching framework here because the basics are th also important, I would say. So we start with a browser cache. It's th at this point, it's not really related to Typo3. However, Typo3, you know, just plays the game re really well. So the browser cache works like that. The, the browser, I surf on, uh, on a website, I request a URL, and the server tells you, Here's your response, here's your HTML output, here's your CSS file, here's your image. And you can keep it for, let's say, 24 hours. And that's something the browser say, takes seriously and says, well, I store it in my um, you know, internal browser cache, whatever thing. Um, and the next time, I will only ask, if I request the same page again, the, the, the server says, well, it's the same state as before, you just uh, can use it or you don't even request this URL anymore. You just know I already have it. That, that's a valid use case with CSS and JavaScript files because 
you you don't change them you know hourly hopefully and that's that's where the whole e tag logic which is a hash that is sent through the http protocol as well um and you know you don't have to fetch all the data again so so this is the game that the browser plays with the server and type 3 just feeds the information to the server well that's something um that you can keep for 24 hours however there are things that should not be um stored in the browser cache think of online banking you don't need to know um you don't want to keep your your you know current um credit card um information not the the information itself but you know what you have on your bank account the the amount of money you have in there in your browser cache uh it could change but it also it's something that's very sensible so at that point the http headers that are sent is like don't cache it no cache it's private and under the hood if we look at the the typo3 logic in there you request something and the server you know gives you this information and gives you the response at that at that point typo3 needs to check do i have some sensible information there do i have some personalized information do i have some information that is based on you know search result or something like that uh you have special user groups um so i have a session all these kinds of things need to be taken into account and that's the typo3 part in this game so as you see typo3 does some heavy lifting as soon as you request something and that's what we call the so called page cache that's something if you request the website typo3 looks and see do i have parts of it already stored or do i have to you know build everything from scratch again so i personally say it's it's a first hit when their typo3 has nothing you know pre-processed for you um for your html website and a cached hit where it says well i got all the data already i just send it out and that's that's under the hood the caching framework but there's there's more to that i want to give you an example on that typo3 actually does all this stuff for you already if you have a plain installation you don't have to worry about anything at all so what i have is i have a installation where i have a website and it just looks like that um it's a introduction package from with a bootstrap package a regular website uh, that has some static content on it and if i look at this website right now it's um it's the same browser as the editor that i'm logged in into the backend so some caches don't apply so it's not like the the first hit stuff and that's why i have opened a second browser to show you how i call this uh, website without um without any side effects let's put it this way so the the regular customer or website visitor that goes on your website so at that point um i can of course call this website no no problem at all and then i have this very nice clear cache flush front end cache button at that point all caches from all pages that i have are invalidated and every time uh, the next time somebody visits any of these um urls typo3 does the heavy lifting so at that point i just reload this page and it takes at that point maybe a second and the next time i just hit the reload button it takes 100 milliseconds you don't, you hardly see the blue blue uh, status bar because it's really fast so that means typo3 has this stuff um already in place for you so now i change something i i define okay maybe the start browsing should be changed to um start surfing because we're cool now right changed it and i don't do anything else i just reload the website visitors um, browser and instead of start browsing it says start, start surfing so typo3 does invalidate uh, the cache of this page 
right away when I save something. So the next time, it's just showing uh, start surfing, and it does the first hit again. And now we just have it stored in the Type 3 caching framework. Well, that's easy. You don't need, actually need to configure anything. But there are parts, like uh, I have a special news section, and I have, I don't know, 20 new news per day. So that's something that shouldn't be stored in the cache for 24 hours, right? So it's possible to define certain blocks as this part um, should not be cacheable. However, if you have a news that changes, or you have a news section that changes, you know, every five minutes or ten minutes or every hour, that's something I would consider still cacheable because you can cache it, you can keep it, and um, you just need to say, well, that should be kept for five minutes if you have um, built that in the caching framework, but not uh, something that I need to rebuild every time. I visit the website because that's, if you have a lot of traffic, that's a real pain. So, still, a new section is cacheable in my opinion. But the whole personalization topic or the, the user login part where it says logged in as Benny um, is something that is truly different per page uh, or per visitor. So, that's the part where you can't, you can never say store it in the browser for 24 hours, store it, um, to store the whole, the full page cache in the caching framework. And what Typo3 actually does is it builds all the parts of your website. And if you define a section like start surfing, and that's define it as a non-cacheable, then this part uh, will get built on the second hit again and again. So basically the first hit takes all um, functionality except the non-cacheables, and stores it in the cache. And on the second hit, it just takes the cache and says, hey, I have some parts that I need to you know, rerun and do the small lifting instead of the heavy lifting. At that point, and that's when, um, when Typo3 only has to do a little work. So that actually is a really cool feature. And um, integrators and uh, developers can define that for certain parts and there, there's even more logic with the whole cache tax topic and um, whatever you can define. Well, this, this part should be cached for five minutes, the other one for an hour, the other, one, other parts for like a, a day. Um, and of course, as soon as you hit the uh, flush front end cache button, or you can also do it on a per page uh, basis with this clear cache for this page button, then all the parts are invalidated automatically. Or not automatically, but of course, um, truly cleared. So about the caching, um, the other button, flush all caches, is usually something that only integrators or developers need if they change something in, inside the system. That's related to um, to your PHP classes, uh, to XBase, and all to this, this other um, development parts that um, you need if you really change something in your system, you can actually trigger the flush all cache but, uh, button or the logic behind it through CLI or in the install tool. But that's the difference between the two of them. As you have seen with, you know, start surfing, you actually don't need this button as an editor if you just if your type of three system is configured the right way. But um, in some cases, it's quite helpful to have this functionality. If if you change something in your typo script, flush front end caches is also the way to go. So flush all caches is something I rarely need to use when I'm not in development um, mode. However, there's one thing instead of this, these non-cacheables, and so this is all related to TypoScript, COA int and user int, um, there's some other hard mm, disable the cache option. And that's something I, I want to, I've seen in, in quite some installations, I would also recommend not to use this logic. You can actually configure it out of the box on a per page basis, there's a disable cache checkbox, um, 
also you see the cache lifetime, say, okay, this page should be cached only for an hour, and the whole functionality of the cache tags, which I would not uh, cover right now. But at that point, this page will never use the true functionality that Typo3 offers right away. So I will, um, the first thing, I, if I look at an installation and that has this option set, I would recommend you do something wrong. It's it's not, uh, it, it was maybe nice like 10 years ago, but that's a, a legacy option that I would really like to see that nobody uses. And instead, you should use this whole non-cacheable functionality that just Typo3 does out of the box as well. So this user in uh, the, this um, no cache option can also be configured to have it in your URL. So if I use no cache equals one, the whole page takes so much time every time. It's not the 100 milliseconds, but it's actually one second or two seconds because it never fetches the cache. And you can configure it on a per, per page basis on the URL and on the um, on the integrator level with TypoScript. However, I do think it's the wrong approach and I hopefully um, see that there will be a lot of places um, where we move away from this logic. If you have any um, websites that you say we, we truly need it at that place, I would like to, you know, uh, get into a discussion maybe on YouTube or um, you know Twitter, Slack, whatever to find out what's what's the the problem with why why it should never be using the caching framework actually, and with that we can see if it's just you know used wrongly or if there are actually use cases with it. So my recommendation for 99% or actually 100% of the websites that I've seen is. The first hit, second hit uh, functionality is fine. I usually use um, I use Blackfire to to debug or to to find the performance issues that people have with the first hit. You know, the first time I, somebody visits, it takes takes ten seconds. I use Blackfire to to find out well why does it need to take one uh, ten seconds, and you can actually break it down to a fragment of that amount of time. And then we have the second hit where you say, well, why can't be more stuff built into the caching framework so it's even faster. So with a with the second hit, with a fully cached page, I've seen um, websites running with PHP 7 that just go down to from, you know, 800 milliseconds to 60 milliseconds for a second hit. So the website is really, really fast. Of course, not just uh, Typo 3, but also the server needs to be configured in the right way so all the HTTP headers are sent properly. But the, last not the le but not least, the whole um, no cache thing is really uh, some important topic for me. Try to avoid it. If you have installations, check if you use it anywhere in your TypoScript or in your URLs or in uh, your page properties and um, find out why you're using it. Switch to userint, and that that way you can actually make your customers happy, and you know save yourself from a lot of support calls. So next time we'll talk about the caching framework, but for now I think um, you'll get a big picture of how the front end of Typo3 is compiled together and what parts can be um, configured, and that's the that's the the, the main powerful part of Typo3 caching. Thanks a lot and see you next time. Bye.